side. But I think you guys can hear me loud and clear now, correct? And it's not a problem. You can hear me good and clear. Fantastic. Okay, let's try this again. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this WMG session. I'm your host, Toby Araimi. I'm not going to say I'm your host with the most because Sterling has completely killed that line, but I'm your host, Toby Araimi. I'm joined in the studio with me today. Mr. S Record is here in the studio, and he may ask questions from our set. This is a bit of a crazy set today, a bit of a crazy setup. In fact, if you actually saw how my set looked right now, it's crazy, but we're going to get on with it. We've got some great, a great topic today to discuss and to talk about, and it's dealing with trader psychology. Sorry about all the faff beforehand, but such is the nature of live on YouTube. But we're going to discuss today trading psychology. And by the way, this is going to be a bit of a series. I'm going to have to really break it down for you because there are just so many people who enter into trading with um, pre preconceived ideologies or idea or any kind of financial market, any kind of uh, a thing you want to get involved in that incurs some kind of risk. You, there's always this uh, sense of optimism with it that's good, but it's often met with a lack of realism. And so today is all about giving you the real inside scoop behind trading. This is stuff that people often avoid. In fact, a lot of people, I had somebody just last week, I was looking through the comments on last week's episode, and they were saying, I thought this man was going to show us how to make money. All he's doing is talking. And people like uh, of that nature, people of that ilk don't understand that part of the secret of success, part of the secret of financial success, I would say 80% of the secret of financial success is all down to your mindset and to your mentality. I have a different mentality from a lot of people out there. In fact, sometimes I feel like a crazy one or a crazy person amongst people because I don't understand anymore how people uh, think with regards to finance, with regards to money. 90%, 80 to 90% of success in any sphere of life is all in the mind. 10% is actually what you get to do with your hands. 10% is actually sitting behind a screen and trading or, or buying that property, that house you want to buy. A lot of people find that they're sabotage in the journey of success by the way they think. Take myself, for example. I started trading many, 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 many years ago. And when I came to the trading world, I was sold the idea of trading by a slick rick in a suit. I'm talking about Wolf of Wall Street type, wearing a three-piece suit, hair gel back so slick you could, you could surf on it. I mean, this guy was everything. You could tell he had puffed a few of the dragon as well. But he was right there. He was telling me about uh, how I could be this, um, how I could be this successful phenomenon, how I could become a multi-millionaire sensation overnight. When I started trading, I didn't start professionally trading like I am now. I started with binary options, which is a form of trading uh, uh, or a form of really gambling because back then they didn't even teach you how to trade and you set your account up with some someone called a broker and really and truly the broker's job is to make you broke let me just be honest with you they call themselves brokers on purpose their assignment any broker I don't care if it's property whatever it is anybody who wants to broker a deal for you is really there to get as much as your um, of your money as possible and brokers make money like royalties from you clicking and buying sell that's why a lot of brokers like throwing out signals they don't care if those signals win. Their job is to keep throwing out signals so you, they get as much of your cash as possible. They get you hooked. They know you're going to put more money in because that gambling nature is going to kick in on the inside of you, which is why every time we try to sell the idea of trading or moving in the financial markets to anybody, everybody always says people who ha have no idea about the financial markets always start with this. But isn't it risky, though? And it's almost as though when they say it, it's almost as though they said something crazy intelligent. It's almost, it sounds as if in that moment they said something so unique and so profound. It seems to me that almost everybody I speak to in the trading industry or the financial industry or any kind of business will always start their statement with, but, but isn't it risky though? Isn't it risky? And I know we all hear cliche lines like, well, if there's no risk, there's no reward. But listen, this is a true fact of life. 
Anything worth having in life is risky. All of you right now, when COVID-19, some of you risked going out to Sainsbury's or Tesco or Walmart or wherever you are to go and buy something to take care of yourself so you can eat. You took a risk because you deemed the risk to be worthwhile. And so everything dealing with trading psychology or business psychology or anything like that always starts with assessing the risk. First, though, it starts with finding out what you want. And by the way, all these sharks that are out there are there to feed into exactly what you want, which is why when we do our business presentations, we try to keep as down to earth, as real, as non scammy as possible. In fact, we play our testimonials of different people we've taught to trade, and still we have people saying they're paid actors. It's a scam. This is rubbish. We try to keep everything sober, everything neutral, everything down to earth. And I actually... Um, had a few of my students uh, tell me today they were really grateful because I hit some losses today. I was 6% drawdown on a trade. I was 2000 something dollars down today on my trades. And my psychology was sunk. It was going to hell fast. It was horrible. And you should have heard me in the live chat. I sounded like a drowning man because the, the responsibility on me to provide signals for people who want to follow our signals was too heavy. And I was out agitated and I'm giving them trades and I'm second guessing myself and I'm saying I was not on form for anyone who knows me I was not on form today at all and I was quite agitated and frustrated and one of my students said thank you for being open and honest we try everything we can to be honest within WMG so I was drawn down by 2000 almost every trade I seemed to enter kept on losing back to back back to back and I, I want to I walk you through exactly what was going on in my head while I'm losing. I want to be open and transparent with you so you can learn from some of my own flaws a bit about trading psychology. But back to back, I'm losing $2,000 down. And then by the end of the day, I actually have still got two trades in motion right now. But last time I looked, it was $11,000 in profit. I took $5,000 off the market, recovered my losses, and also I got two trades now running into profit with zero risk at all. And I sent that to my private group to say, look at this. This is a prime example of what I'm going to be talking about today. The funny and ironic thing is I was teach, I'm going to teach tonight on trading psychology, a lesson I don't believe I've ever taught on. I'm going to teach tonight on business psychology and tra trading psychology. And again, I haven't touched on this uh, subject. And I am becoming the message that I'm about to teach on. I'm literally exhibiting the worst psychology that you could ever imagine all in one day. I went through all four seasons in one day. In fact, this week has been one of the toughest weeks in my trading career in a long time. And I can tell you why it's tough. It's actually not because the markets are tough. It's because something's going on. But let me, let me give you a bit of my sneak preview. I lived in uh, Woolwich. I start my trading career in buying the options. I, I have this girl on the phone. I still remember her name today. I won't name and shame her. But she's calling me on the phone. And she's saying, Toby, I'm going to make you super rich. All you have to do is listen to exactly what I say. If you listen, you're going to make loads of money. You know how they talk. You're going to make loads of money. Are you ready? Are you ready, Toby? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm ready. I'm on fire. Because I'm hearing that all I need to do is click a few buttons. And I'm going to make money. And buying me options, if I click, I can make six. 60% of what I put in. I mean, this is amazing ROI. So she's like, okay, Toby, right now, three trades. You're going to buy gold. You're going to sell Euro USD. Are you ready? Do it now. I go ahead. I buy gold and I sell Euro USD. She calls me five minutes later. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant sell Euro USD and buy gold. And my money's going, by the way. And she's like, reverse the trade. I reverse the trade. Then she calls me. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't... I didn't mean that. I meant that we're meant to look at the indices like the, the FTSE and the NASDAQ to assess. And it was very, very, very clear to me that this girl didn't know what she was doing. Um, and still, then I had somebody else jump on the phone. Another slick Rick in a three-piece suit gets, gets on the phone. He says, come to the office and meet me. I come to the office and meet him. He says, Toby, do you want to be a millionaire? Look at me. Three-piece. Look at me. Armani. Look at me. He's got his hair gelled. I was like, yeah, I want to be just like you. I'm young. And I'm like, yes, of course I want to be like you. I'm looking at this guy. And he says, Toby, do you want to be rich? Who do you bank with? I said, I bank with Barclays. He said, okay. 
He said, right, Toby. Today, I want you to get for me, if you want to be rich, I want you to get 50,000 pounds by the end of today. Are you, are you ready to do that? I was like, what am I going to get 50,000? He said, see, see, there's there. Excuses. That's why you'll never be where I am. Right there. You'll never be where I am. He said, I said, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, what should I do? He said, go to your bank, request a loan for at least 10,000 pounds. And he told me, show me some way that I could get it done. He said, I'll be on the phone with you and I will guide you through the process. I am doing this, by the way. I've contacted my bank, ordered a credit card, got everything lined up because this guy's promised me. I still remember to, today. He said non-farm payroll. If he, he said if you put money on non-farm payroll, he said, Toby, you're going to bank some big money. You're about to make some big bucks. Put your money on non-farm payroll. Now, I'm, uh, now I, I, I literally last minute, I don't know what slapped me on the face, but it was definitely common sense. And I literally went, I can't do this. I can't take a loan now. And from then, I started ignoring this guy's calls. It turns out the whole company unravels. Everything falls apart. The entire company cr crumbles. But something on the inside of me, unlike many people, and this is why I say I think I have a bit different mentality to others, something on the inside of me said, but there's still something real out there. The fake is always evidence that the real exists. So basically I find through a, a long story of trying everybody's strategy, everybody's strategy, listen, everybody's strategy. I found a, a kid who knew how to trade. The guy said, Toby, if you pay me 60 quid a week, 60 pounds a week, I'll teach you. He's wearing rollies, right? He's smoking cigars while he's talking to me. I mean, this was a kid, and I'm looking at him like, boy, he's getting in rented uh, Rolls Royces. He's literally clicking his finger, and a Rolls Royce is coming to pick him up. He's sitting on the inside and going on. I was like, what is the, I didn't even know 16-year-olds could be inside of these cars. He's inside and he's enjoying himself. And I said, teach me. Every day in a mall, he's teaching me how to trade. Very soon I became uh, a successful trader. Um, I, I actually became, I, I, in my opinion, I became better than him. And then we, we started trying to work together. Then things didn't work out. He's still a great trader, I believe, till this day. Um, but I, I decided to set up my own thing. Now, look at this. I go to Argos. And you can see it on my Instagram at Toby Arimi. I go to Argos, buy myself a desk. I sit down at this desk. It was a 50-pound desk it's, it, or a 100 pounds, something like that. I bought myself a little sliding chair. I'm sat down ready to trade. So I want to walk you through my psychology. This is my psychology right now. I've seen a kid turn over 22,000 pounds a week. I've now got 1,000 pounds in my account. No, 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 300 pounds in my account. I didn't even have 1,000. I have 300 pounds in my account. And let me tell you what I, is going through my brain. I am about to be a multimillionaire. Listen, nothing's holding me back. All of a sudden, when you sit down in front of a trading chart, you got live money in the account, the euphoric experience that hits you, when especially when you've succeeded in a demo environment with fake money, monopoly money for a while, that experience that hits you that just says, it's time. I am about to become a multimillionaire right now. I gave myself a very short amount of time to become a multimillionaire. Now, I'm sat there. I'm fresh. I've... I've got everything ready, computer, set, table, set. I've told my wife, don't worry, girlfriend, we're about to make some moves. We're going to be rich. My wife is working a nine to five. I'm at home trading. I did feel like a waste man. I'm telling you now, because when you've traded, trading takes literally about 10 minutes. After which, what am I doing? So I've become an Uber driver because I didn't want to feel like one of these waste men that's sitting down at home playing Game Boy. I became an Uber driver, Game Boy, PlayStation. I become an Uber driver and I'm going around picking people up just to make some money, you know, sustain things in the home, feel a bit like a breadwinner at home. And, and I come back and I'm trading. I'm on my grind. Nothing. Listen, I burn all my return policies. I left my job. This is it. I'm about to become a pro trader. Let me tell you what else I had. I had actually, still have till today, over 100 strategies. I had a library of strategies like you would not believe. And I had at my disposal any one of these strategies, including indicators. I am ready to, this is Toby taking on the world. I'm ready to annihilate the trading industry. I put on my first trade and the most amazing thing happens. Nothing could top this experience. I won. How much did I win? I won about 10 pounds on my first trade. 
I sat back like I was in charge of the whole universe. I sat that back like you, you, you don't, you don't know me. I'm a millionaire. Don't touch me. All of a sudden, I'm like, hey, I just made ten pounds on this trade. If I had put a bit more money into that trade, if I had put maybe two standard lots instead of 0.01, 0.01 lots is like one p in the market per pip. So the trade needs to move 30 pips to or 100 pips to even make me a pound. I said if I had put maybe uh, two lots into the trade. So guess what I do? On the next trade, I put two lots. Uh, sorry, one lot. I quickly closed at $100. The trade went boop, boop. I'm freaking out. My heart's racing with the market. I said, close, close, close. I closed with $100. I've now made profit. My wife comes home end of the day. My chest is out. Listen, my chest is out. I am the, I'm the Don Dada. I am the man of the universe. My wife is now home. I'm like, yeah, babe, what can I get you? What can I... What? What can I buy you? I'm the man of this house now. I just made a hundred pounds in ten minutes sitting down with my trading screen. I'm not even you went nine to five to make a hundred today. I sat down for ten minutes. Do you know how powerful that feels? So next day I'm ready again to do my thing, enter into those markets, execute those trades, crush it like we're all ready to do. And what happens the next day? I lose. I'm like, no, no, something's wrong. I'm, uh, something's going on here. It's, it's, it, 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 I must have, it, it must be the market's fault. So I enter again another trade with higher risk because I've got to recover the loss and I lose again. I'm like, no, 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 something's not right. So I enter again, but now I'm down about $200. And I enter again, and now I'm really afraid, but it's gone into favor. So I close at $35, but I'm still net negative, about 170 something dollars. I'm still net negative, and I'm like, what's going on? I'm, I'm very sure this is some people's story who are on here. So, so do you know what I do? Uh, the next day, my chest isn't out. My wife comes home. She says, how was everything? So I say, it was great. <laughs> how much did you make today? I lied. I'm going to confess now. I, I said, great, uh, 20%. I just made it up. I just, I just drummed the number out of thin air quite literally because there's no way I can explain to this woman I've left my job to lose again in the market. So guess what? I was losing for weeks. Then I became, let me tell you, depressed. You do, no, you don't understand the level of depression traders experience. Because traders, to be a trader, you need a certain personality. You've been sold a dream. You believe the dream that you've been sold, that something's going to be successful. Then I'm failing. I'm depressed. It's not working. I'm really hammering the market by being a gambler. So what do I do? I join a signal service. Yes, they're all out there. All you have to do is type on Instagram, hashtag signals, because there are so many people who believe in easy money. So I hashtag signal service. I join some signal services that are out there, and guess what? I'm making some money, and I'm losing more than I make, and I'm typing to the guru saying, hey, man, uh, well, what's going on? I'm, I'm entering your signals, and the guru's like, shut up. It's because you don't know what you're doing. Shut your mouth. It's because you didn't even place this. And the guru is like, hey, buy this. No stop loss, guys. No stop loss. Just buy. That, what I mean by stop loss is don't uh, put anything in the market that will close the trade if the trade goes against you. Uh, expose 100% of your account. I am lo losing after losing. I said to my wife, I became like a drug addict. I became a bit of a junkie. I said, babe, babe there's another guru. And he said, all we need, all, all we need is uh, babe, 1,000, 1,000 pounds. Uh, if you work for this long, then babe, I'll be able to get that 1,000 pounds together and I'll try and do some room drive and we'll put the money together. She's like, okay, so we put the money together at 1,000 down. I'm failing again at that course. In fact, this was another guy's course who's a hedge fund manager. I'm like, surely this is it. We practice his strategies. In fact, after paying 1,000 pounds for a week's course, we sit down together to put his strategies into practice and for one month, his strategies did nothing but lose. For a whole month, boom, loss, boom, loss, boom, loss. Next day, win, loss, loss. It's like, I said to my wife, babe, one more. 
one more. There's this indicator that if you buy it, it knows exactly when the market's going to buy and sell. It's a holy grail. The guy says it's a holy grail. Babe, it's only £500 a year for the license for it. And if it doesn't work, I don't need to pay it the next year. Let's quickly scratch. After a while, let me tell you, I became such a junkie. I'm putting together different things in different ways to be able to support my failed trading habit. And then I realized something. Something suddenly dawned on me in a moment. And this, these are some of the realizations that I want to bring to you that has bolstered my trading psychology for the last 10 years, that has held me through. We come to trading with certain presets. Our presets need to be quickly annihilated. I heard from a young man who uh, introduced the idea of trading to me many, many, many years ago. Introduced the idea of trading to me. He said to me, I promise you something. You're going to open a live account and you're going to blow the entire amount. Everybody does it. He said, every if you're going to be a successful trader, you've got to blow your whole account. So actually, when he said that, I didn't go with him as a guru. You understand what I'm saying? Because if a guru is telling you, your leader is telling you, you're going to blow your entire account, that's my thought. Maybe that's not the kind of guru I want to go with. So I said, no, I'm going to look for somebody else to help me out. And all the while, in the back of my brain, while I'm managing my small 500-pound account, this little demon is gnashing in the back of my head, saying, we're going to blow your whole account. The whole thing is going to go. You're going to blow your whole account. And I never blew my whole account. In fact, but something did happen to me. When we became quite successful at trading, and I was now managing several hundreds of thousands of dollar accounts, we're turning over fourteen to 30,000 pounds a month, money I'd never seen in my life, just accumulating and accumulating. Um, I said to uh, one of my guys, you take one account, you take, here's another 100,000, and you take 100,000. And at, by this point, let me say, I'm going to show you, because even me doing that is bad psychology. I'm successful. Why am I giving away money to different people? Why am I delegating early? I'm going to show you some of the things that we do to sabotage, some of the things great traders have done to sabotage their success. You'll always know how you're sabotaging by your behavior. You'll always know that you're sabotaging by the fact that you have not yet succeeded. Actually, if you fail, it's all you. There's something, we can either blame the things without, but I promise you, more failure is within than without. I promise you. If a bank ever gets broken into, nobody ever asks uh, for outside information first. The first people that they research when a bank is ever broken into are the people within the bank. If your life is failing right now in any area, we don't need to ask mommy, daddy, friends, who wasn't there for you? What didn't go wrong? Well, I have sympathies for those things. We have to take responsibility at some point and realize that if anything get, gets to us or if anything breaks in, it happens first from within. The enemy of enemy, the enemy within. And I have delegated my accounts out to various different people, and I've done all this, and you know, and 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 one of the guys who we delegated the account to, and I'm, I'm saying this with love because I still, have some res I still have respect for him now. We've since moved on and forgiven. But one of the guys also had bad psychology with regards to risk and reward management. And I guess he decided he was going to be a millionaire overnight. So while I'm flying off to America to meet some of our clients who are managing large amounts of funds for us, I land in America, get there, and I realize one of the accounts has serious percentages I'm talking tens of thousands like a, a, a big shark has come and just eaten a whole chunk out of the account and by the way this account was one of the clients that I'm seeing that day I'm in front of the client I'm sitting in front of him and a huge we call them I call them there's two things that kill your trading account or your bank account even if you've got a bank account two things are killing your bank account piranha bites and shark bites but the worst ones are your piranha bites. Those tiny little things that, you know, Deliveroo here, Uber Eats there, Uber Journey there, buy, uh, tap tap everywhere, chocolate bar this. All of a sudden, you spend a, 200 pounds a, in a day, and you're like, how did that happen? It's those piranha bites. But this was a shark bite. This was one of those big jaws experiences that just came out of the ocean to bite a huge chunk out of my, my account. And let me tell you, this was tens of thousands of pounds. I had never lost that amount of money in my life. Part of me was kind of 
proud of it. Like Toby, you didn't. You never lost thirty thousand. You never had thirty thousand in your life to lose. How did you lose thirty thousand? But I lost, uh, or uh, it was a considerable amount. And I'm watching, by the way, whoever's trading that account. I won't mention his, his name. But he's dragged as the tr as the market is chasing and going down because he believes it's going up. No, he believed it was going down. But as the market is going up, he's moving the stop loss. And if, if you know the thing about trading, when you move the stop loss, you're only increasing the risk. And it was, it was just getting worse and worse, and I was watching. And by the way, the, I want to set the scene, because I had opened my laptop, because I was going to happily demonstrate to those clients in front of me how well we'd been managing their funds. And I was getting ready to spin the laptop, they're smiling in front of me, as I open it, I see money gone. And it was after that that I became a successful trader. What happened? What happened? If you're going to be a successful trader, something needs to happen to all of you. And I'm not going to doom you and say you need to blow your account or you need to lose all your money. I don't believe you actually need to do any of that. If you're going to be successful in any area of your life, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's trading. I don't care what it is. This trading is a lesson about life. Any of my traders will tell you trading is a lesson about life. The markets will tell you about yourself. It's such a beautiful mirror of who you are as a person because uh, your, your money is always an expression of who you are. Money is an expression of your value system. I always know what you value by what you spend your money on or what you utilize your money for. And in this moment, something beautiful happened to me that I need to happen to you. And let me tell you what was happening, because it didn't happen immediately. It took me a while to figure out the beauty of what happened to me. I would wake up in the middle of the night. I never had panic attacks in my life. I used to look at people who had panic attacks and just be like, can you breathe? Just breathe. Stop, stop doing that. Stop. He just breathe. This is, come on. You're in control. Calm down. I literally wake up in the middle of the night like, <clears throat> I was choking. I could not breathe. Guys, things were just, I mean, it was awful. These guys were so gracious and forgiving. We've lost a lot of their fortune, a lot of their money. And all my other clients were calling me saying, you lost our money. We hate you. You're a scammer. They loved me when I was producing 200% for everybody sings Hosanna. You know, and then crucified in the next breath. They love me when I was doing great and making them all this money. Next minute, I am the worst person in their, in, in like, just, I'm, I am, I'm just, I lost friends. I lost friends, which is by the, why, by the way, a lot of my guys are still to the day. When are you going to manage funds? They think this is an exciting thing for me. It's not. There's a lot of investors management you have to do, not just money management. And so I'm here. With the, I'm having panic attacks and all this, and then maybe a couple of months pass, I get over it, and I open a trading account, and I start winning. I start winning back to back. I start winning consistently. I start winning over and over and over again. I'm succeeding. I'm flying through on demo. I'm flying through on live results. And I realize what happened in that moment. My greatest fear was behind me. My greatest fear all that time, stimulated by that young man who told me I was going to lose everything, my greatest fear was losing it all. That was my greatest fear. Because at that time, actually, we had lost such an amount of money and so breached our risk management parameters that myself and my wife dug out of our own personal money, our own personal profits, and tried our hardest to redistribute funds to different people as much as we could. We just, could, we just couldn't do it all. But we tried our hardest to redistribute and give people some of their uh, compensation back, not because we lost money. That's to be accepted when you're trading but because we had over-risked our trades. But something very special happened to me. My greatest fear had come upon me. My greatest fear had happened. I don't know about any of you who've experienced near-death experiences. I've experienced many, been in a few car crashes, not because I was driving, actually, a lot of them I was the passenger, some of them I was driving and I was hit. In fact, 
car crashes are, have been non-fault to me when I've had them, but I've been in car crashes and something happens when you've been in a devastating incident. Or I, when I was younger, I literally faced death and, and doctors didn't think I was going to live another night. And something happens to you when your worst fear has happened to you, when your worst fear has come upon you, something fantastic happens. You're not afraid anymore. You're just not afraid anymore. You just don't care anymore. The key to living successfully is living fearlessly. I'll say that again just so you can hear me in the back. The key to living successfully is living fearlessly. A lot of you right now are not living successfully, trading successfully, doing business successfully because of fear. Some of you have been in WMG, haven't even watched the course because of fear. Some of you have not started. I can put your diagnosis, every excuse you've ever made for failure in your life has been one thing and one thing only, fear. Fear has put you in an unresourceful state. Fear has put you in an unresourceful place. And if I can, if I can put down every single trader, every single business person's main problem down to one word, I'll put it down fear. Some people, someone said to me, there are two forces that control the market, greed and fear. And I said, no, there's only one force and it's called fear. Fear controls greed. The reason why somebody's greedy is because they don't think that they'll have enough. That's why they get greedy. And they, they don't think that the market will be there tomorrow. They fear, they fear missing out. The reason why people hesitate on getting into trades or don't enter certain trades that they were, uh, uh, were meant to get into is because of fear. And let me tell you something. If we could get rid of the eloquence with which we've camouflaged fear, the, the, the good language we've utilized to camouflage fear, the excuses that we've utilized to give up and quit, we'll realize that everything that we go through, every wrong thing, every form of sabotage, our proverbial bank gets broken into because fear from within lets the disaster from without out. And, and if it's anything I've known about fear, I don't know if any of you understand the force of fear, the magnetism of fear, what you fear happens. I don't know if anybody's realized this yet about life. There's this crazy magnetizing thing about fear. Have you ever thought, I just knew that was going to happen? It's not because you were psychic. It's not because you're prophetic. Actually, it's because you are creating the very uh, atmosphere around you that causes the very things that you fear to happen. Some of you right now, you've joined WMG, you're still afraid it's a scab. Some of you are uh, not even watching the videos because you're wondering, is somebody else going to succeed before I do? Some of you are not inviting because you're like, well, I'm not going to invite until I learn how to trade as if whoever you invite can't learn faster than you and you're not holding somebody else's success back. But we have learned to mask fear as conventional wisdom. We've learned to mask fear as common sense. And I, I'll be honest with you, I've never met a rich or wealthy person that made much sense to the people around them. In fact, if you're going to be successful, you have to go beyond common sense and enter into a, a realm of unusual sense and unus unusual wisdom. Now, what does it take to be successful? What does it take to build a winning psychology in the trading industry? I'll tell you now, some of your first things, and I'm looking at some of your comments, which is why my eyes are turning over here. We have about 15 minutes uh, before this uh, session closes. But some of the things that it's going to take for you to be a successful trader. Before we go into the, uh, in fact, we'll, we'll look at it. Some of the tips that it's going to take for you to be a successful trader, this is so important. And we've actually looked at it before in our trading school, but I'm going to give you a different spin on it for you WMGers and those of you who are outside who are traders or business people in any other sphere of your life. The first secret that I can give you, because I've understood something about trading. As I trade, let's say, uh, trading, traders who live for the trade will fail. This is why sometimes I'm a bit nervous of our trophy room. Because our trophy room encourages you to live for the trade. If you're in WMG, you know what the trophy room is. It's where we post our successful trades. Our trophy room might teach you how to win for the trade. And the issue is, you have about 20 trades in front of you this month. Let's just say, on average, about 20 trades in front of you this month. Do you know that not all of them are going to win? Did you know at least, at least 30% of those trades are going to lose? Have you yet prepared? See, if you live for the trade, you haven't yet prepared your mind. 
that 30% of your trades are going to lose. That means six out of those 20 trades that you take are about to be losing. Did I just do quick maths? I'm quite impressed with myself. Was that right? I'm looking at Sony's account. Did I just do, that was quick maths. See, I'm amazed. Maybe I'm not dyslexic anymore. Having a moment right now. Okay, six out of 20 of your trades, think about that, are going to be losing trades. But sometimes, I'll tell you what happens, because of fear, we exacerbate those six out of 20, and it becomes 10. 15 out of 20 of your trades become losers because you exacerbate it. And I'm going to show you exactly how. This is how. You open your, 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 your trades for a moment. You open your screen. You get into a position. You analyze five keys, directional bias, MSB, RTO, blah, 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 cause, okay, here's an entry, RTO, boom, you get into the trade. You lost. Let me tell you what happened when you lost. Because the brain, the brain has a rational part and it has an irrational part. You know, if I bang my hand on the table, if we all bang the back of our hand on the table, we'd all say, ouch, that really hurt. And we've been taught that emotional pain is the same thing. But emotional pain is different because if we all banged our hand on this table, we'd all feel it pretty much the same way. We'd all feel, ow, that really hurts. But emotional pain is always subject to interpretation. And how you interpret your emotional pain matters. Because your interpretation is your perception and your perception is your action. Say it again. Your interpretation is your perception, and your perce especially for those of you who live from trade to trade and not for the probability. What do I mean by the probability? The probability traders are looking at the end of month statement. They, they will post their trophies, yes, but it really doesn't matter to them. What matters to them is that end of month statement. What matters to them is not the day that they lose. See, some people have one bad trading day and that's it, it's over. You're not ready for this. You're not ready to be in this industry. Some people have one bad week and it's like, oh, terrible, yep, yeah, it's rubbish. See, your brain is highly relational, it's highly irrational. What it does, anybody can tell you this, anybody who's traded, anybody who's live trading right now will tell you this, or if you bought a piece of property or whatever, will tell you this. This is how fear works. You lose the trade. Okay, you're fine for that one. You get in again, you lose again. Now your heart's really racing. Let me tell you what happens. Your brain will not just lose that trade. Your brain will connect to every other time in your life that you failed. In that moment, your brain will go back to the six-year-old you who sucked in school and will remind you that you're in Wealth Mentor. See, some people are laughing right now. It will remind you that you're in Wealth Mentor and it's like a school. And, oh, it just takes you back to school how you failed. And your brain will connect to how your dad told you don't do business, get a job. Don't be an idiot, get a job. Your brain is going to connect to every single time you failed. And all of these times you failed are going to form a league against your success. If you don't learn to catch this early, if you don't learn to catch this early, you will not have the mentality that you need. You see, Pete uh, always said it, we don't die because of lack of resources, we die for lack of resourcefulness. We die for lack of resourcefulness. I'm reminded of the, the I think it was five Wall Street bankers that were in a ch elevator on the day of 9-11, the time the Twin Towers were attacked. They were in that elevator with a janitor and none of them knew what to do. But the janitor quickly pulled out his spanner, pulled out his works, twisted this, turned that, got the elevator on manual mode, flicked a switch and the elevator went down. What happened? They had resources, but no resourcefulness. Had that janitor not been there, they would have died not knowing the possibilities because they lacked resourcefulness. All of a sudden, in that moment, because of their lack of competence, their emotions interpreted to them that this was a dead-end situation and that they were going to die. But somebody with resourcefulness, and resourcefulness, is it, it takes a few things to be resourceful. It takes, first of all, a sense of a confidence, a can-do spirit. It takes a compassion to be resourceful, and it also takes 
takes um, a competence uh, to be resourceful. Confidence, competence, and compassion to be in a resourceful state. If you are fearful, you are not resourceful. What do I mean by that? Some of you have given up right at the door of your greatest success. You are just a few trades away from some of your greatest successes, but you gave up early. There's a story in the book, Think and Grow Rich, about the man who gave up an inch away from gold. It's a true story. He bought all these expensive drills to drill gold in the time of the gold rush in the United States. I wish I remember his name. And he buys all these expensive drills and no gold. He gave up completely uh, from, from doing it. Or was it oil? I can't remember. An oil mine, maybe. And he gives up completely uh, from this dream, sells his machines off at low cost. Everything was valueless. All of a sudden, when you guys get the machine, they put the machine, the machine's still in the ground. They press the button once. Boom. And they strike oil. It's a true story about a millionaire who gave up an inch away from oil and learns a valuable lesson from that. We often give up at the moment of breakthrough. Things get really intense at the moment you're about to have some of your greatest breakthroughs in anything, in anything that your hands touch or in anything that your hands do in the business world. And here I'm talking specifically about trading. Now, the issue is this. Once your perceptions have been framed or once you've interpreted that because you failed in six trades, you are therefore a failure. Let me tell you what then happens. The system is a failing system. So we could have a perfect system, which by the way, we have the best system in the trading world, hands down. Tell anybody to tell you they make the kind of ROI we make. They don't exist. We have the hands down greatest trading system in the whole world, and it will continue to be great because we'll continue to learn. We have the greatest trading system. But let me tell you what you do. It doesn't work. The, the trading system that we've got here in WMG, it doesn't work. And let me tell you why it doesn't work. Because something will happen. When you lose and you have a bad mood off of losing, your brain reinterprets everything. And when your brain reinterprets everything, and I'll tell you, this is from my experience. I even did this today. When you reinterpret everything, you'll even reinterpret strategy. And all of a sudden... You, because you don't think it works, your brain will change the strategy and the change strategy won't work and it will justify you that the original strategy doesn't work, not knowing that because you now see through gray tinted glasses or failing glasses that actually you're no longer doing the strategy, you're doing your perception of the strategy because it's been built around fear. And actually, that's what I was doing for the whole week this week because, and I'll tell you, can I tell you where my fear came from actually? My fear came from two weeks ago, and for the past few weeks, if anybody's been watching WMG, I have been on a winning streak. It has scared people in my DMs. People in my DMs are like, is this a scam? Because how are you winning this much? Where are your losing trades? And honestly, I didn't really have losing trades. Sure, I had one or two, but everything was winning. I had a 96% ROI trade. That's not my highest trade today, but 96% ROI from one trade. And it blew up. And I was excited I'm on top of the moon. Let me tell you what happened this week. The moment this week started, I had a voice in my head. And the voice in my head said this, good times don't last. Prepare because it's about to go bad. And that was the voice in my head. Anyone ever heard a voice in their head? And I'm like, man. And I sit in front of my trading charts and I was extra... I hadn't, lost I, I hadn't lost trades yet, but I lost the first trade, and that was it. I lost. This is why if you read any book on trading psychology, any book out there, when you've had, sorry, when you've had a successful winning streak, they tell you go on a holiday. Go away. Get yourself away. Go on a holiday. Why? Because you've made so much money in that time that if you don't go away and enjoy some of it, you will tell yourself you don't deserve it. And so you will work out ways to sabotage the amount of money that you just made. You subconsciously, which is what, by the way, this guy did who blew 
our accounts. Subconsciously, we were doing very good, but subconsciously your brain or your subconscious mind will work out a way without you. I'm talking subconsciously. Your mind will work out a way to sabotage your success because you're, you've got a system that works doesn't mean that what's going on on the inside is working as well. Your heart's going to work over time to sabotage the success that you just created. And you've got to be so careful of that. I'm keeping my eye on time. I've got three minutes till I'm done. I'm probably going to uh, see if Sterling has any, any questions at all. But your mind is going to sabotage. It's going to do what it can. And maybe I'll just stop here. And we'll continue this next week. What, what am I saying here? You've got to be careful about your interpretation of what's happening to you right now. Because for many of you who are in WMG, you are in the greatest financial opportunity of your life. I'll say it again. For those of you in WMG, right, if I pointed your eyes and said, look at your job, you would see the opportunity in your job. Some of you are more excited about your job than WMG. And your job is not paying you near what you deserve. But you've told yourself, this is what I deserve. You're looking at your job. It's secure. It's safe. It's certain. It's guaranteed. At the end of the month, you'll get income. But you're looking at WMG, and you're looking for a way to quit and give up. Not recognizing because of your interpretation of events. Somebody else, like Sterling Record, making that money, commission, going up every single month, bam, 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 uh, reaching new ranks, yachan, boom, 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 trading, making money, Sterling breach 1,000, that's a psychological barrier to breach $1,000 from a trade. Breach that $1,000 barrier in a trade, now consistently hitting that 1,000 figure. This is, these are, these are psychological things that you've got to break through on. But some of you right now, see, the, 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 the issue I have in life is if you, I've always said it, if you give a poor, if you give a, 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 a poor ma man, and by poor I mean a mentality, lack of money is just a result of a poverty mentality. It's not, you're not poor if you have no money. You're poor because of your mind, your mentality. Money, grow, ma your mind grows money. And people give me all kinds of excuses. I've seen a man with no arms, no legs, born with a terminal disease, multimillionaire. Multimillionaire. It's poverty is in the mind. It's in the head. Um, you only have a right to be poor if you're brain dead. If something, or you've got some kind of uh, mental issue going on that has completely shut down your thinking faculty because all, all the money is in the mind. All the money is in the mind. Your mind, your thoughts produce material money if you learn how to produce money with your thoughts. That's why one of my favorite books is Think and Grow Rich because it talks about how uh, money comes from thought. The mind produces money. But the issue is if you give an unresourceful, and by the way, resourceful, resources are not money. Resources are the emotions that you have. Resources are the information and how you interpret them through emotions. That's what resourcefulness is. Resourcefulness is quality emotion that allows you to succeed. Lack of resourcefulness is, is, is inept emotions or, or bankrupt emotions that lead you down a road or, or destined you for failure. And a lot of you, if you're not careful, you have the kind of emotions on the inside of you right now that are militating against your own success. And you've got to watch out for this in your own mind, in your own heart. That's resourcefulness. But um, what was I saying? It's, it's, it's all about, I was saying it's all about interpretation. If you give a poor, if you give a rich, a poor man's mentality a million pounds, he'll turn it into a pound in no time. He'll buy gold chain, gold teeth, everything, he'll lose it all. But you give a rich mentality one pound and he'll turn it into a million. You see, I started with making about 500 pounds a month. Today, my income is several times larger than that. Several times larger than that. In fact, I gave my accountant a headache this month because he was saying, how many income streams do you have? Like, we can't keep a tab on all of them because it all came from my mind. I have so many income streams from book royalties to speaking engagement uh, royalties to, to charity royalties to business royalties to, I mean, so many different uh, sources of income, teaching royalties, all kinds of things producing multiple income streams, and it all came from my mind. But you give a poor man money, he loses it. Why? 
lack of resourcefulness. Resourcefulness is how your emotions are interpreting what's happening to you now. Can I ask you, especially those of you in WMG, do you know where you are right now? Do you know what you have your hands on in this moment? Do you know, some of you even on the call, you're like, let's say it's we're doing a mentorship call and it gets to about uh, uh, 9 p.m. And it's like, well, I'm going to bed now. It's getting late. It's like, do you know do you know what you have the opportunity to listen to for free? Do you know where you are even right now, situated? I used to, when I was broke, I used to long for somebody to sit down like this for free, for free. Everybody was charging tens of thousands of pounds. I used to look for people to sit down with me for free to share the information. Do you know where you are right now? When I was learning how to trade, it was five, ten thousand, fifty thousand pounds to learn just support and resistance. Things that are, I can learn for free online. Yeah, we're teaching you deep things for less than a piano lesson a week. Do you actually understand what you've got your hands on? Or is your interpretation, your mentality, the poverty spirit, where you are right now, is it holding you back from realizing what you've got? When you trade and open the, the markets, are you really trading our strategy? Or are you trading your own version that your fear, if you pay attention and look at your equity chart, the system isn't failing you, the markets aren't failing you, could it be, uh, by the way, if you've got any questions, please type them in the chat and Sterling can uh, read them out. But could it be that it's the reinterpretation? There's a lot to this trading psychology thing. We're going to keep on going on this topic even next week. But I wanted to see and ask you this very question about psychology. Is what's happening to you really happening to you? Or is it your interpretation? Basically this. What is the story you've told yourself that you've fallen for? What is the big lie? that you are telling yourself right now, because if you don't confront it, if you don't confront it, my big lie was this, and this is why I lost all that loads of money. I'm not good enough to trade other people's money. If I trade other people's money, everything will go, and I'll lose it all. These were the lies that I used to believe. These are some lies till this day that I'm still confronting within myself. This week, the lies that I believed, it's all going to go well, and then it's all going to tank. Everything's going to go bad. And all of a sudden, everything was going bad, and I was taking losing trade after losing trade after losing trade because I was forcing my fears on the market and sabotaging my own success. I wanted to talk with you about 10 times you should not trade. There are, way, there are emotions that you have. Maybe you're tired. Maybe you've had an argument. I wanted to talk to you about so many things, but I think this is all we have time for today. Guys, uh, Sterling, any questions? Mm -hmm. What's the best way to release that? So for the people who are experiencing what? The fear? The fear. One of the best ways I find to reset is to understand the value of rest. To understand time out. I'm the worst. I'm the worst. Especially when you're really successful. Especially when you're winning loads of trades. You've got to take time out. You've got to have time in your schedule where you don't trade, where you don't look at a chart, where you mute the group. Yes, I mute the group. There are, there are times I will literally swipe down. I don't do it for a long time. I don't make a habit of it. Listen, some of you just mute because that's a poverty thing again. You're like, oh, everybody's succeeding. I can't stand to the No, no, no. That's a poverty thing. I mute it because it's just, it's time to switch off. It's time to spend time with my family. Some of, some people don't need to quit, they just need to rest. Part of resting might even be doing something else, build the business. That's why WMG exists the way it does. So you don't stress out the trading account. Build the business. Sometimes the way to reset is just re-watch the course, watch videos again calmly, or read some books that help your psychology and your mentality. These are the kind of things that you can do. But regular, regularly schedule in rest. I've been very bad at it because I've got a lie in my head, and I'll tell you my lie. The lie in my head is this. If I disappear for a week, everybody will leave WMG. If I go away for a short period of time because they need me to be here, and actually, I'm doing everything I can to work myself out of being needed in WMG. That's a big lie that I believe, which is probably why I had so many, even so many losers this week. I'm just tired sometimes. And I need to learn myself.
to tell all of you, I love you, but I'm not doing any trading today. I'm taking a break. You've learned how to trade. Trade for yourself. Yeah. Someone asked, which is best, Forex or shares? I like both. They both have different personalities. Forex, if you are a fast person, high liquidity, I love it. High liquidity, fast movements. Some people consider it more risky than the share stock market. I actually don't. We trade both the exact same way. Uh, but if you are sh if you are looking into investment, like being a shareholder, then it's more it's more like your it's different from forex trading. A trader makes money regardless of the market. If it goes up or down, we make money. But if you're going to buy shares, unless you're short selling or something like that, if you're really going to invest in a company and buy shares in the company for the purpose of being a shareholder, then you're only going to make money if those share values go in the direction you want them to go in. So uh, I prefer Forex because it means I never physically acquire anything. I prefer what we do, spread betting, which is trading. I prefer it because we never physically acquire or hold anything. We are just trading directional biases. Um, there's no poverty mindset in our household. So what's your net worth? If there's no poverty, if that's true, if that's true, you are as rich as the poverty you have confronted and overcome. If it's true that there's no poverty mindset, it reflects in your actions. If it reflects in your actions, it will reflect in your bank account. The very fact that you don't have the level of finance that you ought to have is a sign that there is still a limited belief. Like we had, and I had, I couldn't, I couldn't make that statement. And I'm a wealthy person. I couldn't make that statement that there's no poverty mentality in me. I, I, I couldn't make it because I realized as a business, we were capped last month at what? Just 20,000? We, I literally said, there's a lid, and the lid, I said in the meeting, it's not you all, it's me, and I'm going to correct the lid. And literally, we blew the lid off uh, this month, and we're blowing it off again this month. We're about, but that was my cap. I didn't know subconsciously I was capping the business at 20,000. It was reflecting in my behavior. I wasn't training leaders. I wasn't working with people. I was being needed. I was the lid on the business. So actually, if it's true that there is no cap on or poverty mentality in your house, it will have a direct effect on your finance. There's just no way. If it doesn't have a direct effect, it means that it's still there. I'm just being honest. That's a lot of talking. How do you calculate 2% uh, risk? Uh, are you in WMG? Because if you are, there's a lesson on risk management. And by the way, risk management is a good question because risk management is a huge part of managing trader psychology. Traders enter a state called euphoria when they keep on winning. And when they enter the state of euphoria, they feel invincible. And at that place, anybody been there? You start increasing the risk on trades, and actually any flick of the market against you can give you a literal heart attack because you've entered that state. So risk management is an extremely important tool of, uh, of, of uh, managing your psychology. No worries, I understand you, Jessica. How do I learn the spread betting? I understand it's more risky unless you really know. Uh, risk is everywhere. Risk is everywhere. Shares, stock investments, buying a house. Risk is everywhere. You could lose all your money. Risk is everywhere. It exists everywhere. But who wants to live a life without risk? A life without risk is a life full of regret. Who wants to live that life? All you need to do is find out, is this worth risking in or is this reckless? There's a difference between recklessness and risk. And if you can see that risk is managed and mitigated and it's authentic and it's real, then jump in with two feet. What's your opinion on cryptocurrency? You've got to join WMG and speak to Don Miguel. Don Miguel, we actually have a, a segment of Wealth Nation called Devoted to Cryptocurrencies, and I trade cryptocurrencies. I love cryptos. They're a great trade. We've bought some. We've acquired some. We're expecting XRP to short greatly. Bitcoin, we expected it to take off. It took off the way we expected it to. Cryptos are, cryptos are great. I actually think that the economy is moving slowly towards digitization. And more on that from Miguel. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal guy in the crypto space. What's the difference between greed and the need to be successful? Um, well, the difference between greed and need to be successful uh, again, success is not uh, a place you arrive. 
And I guess greed comes from the need to be successful. Because success is a state of being that actually causes wealth to be drawn to you. Success is one of the emotions that you have to acquire in order to be resourceful. Basically, you cannot win as at anything as a failure. A failure in the heart always produces failure. But somebody who's already successful in their heart, somebody who has determined, see, if you're waiting for money to be successful, you'll be greedy. You understand what I'm saying? You're successful already. If, you, if you're grateful, you're a successful human being. If you're grateful every day of your life for what you have and who's around you, you're already successful. The thing is, if we gave that person money who's not grateful, they'll lose it all. So if you're waiting to achieve a certain amount of money to be successful, then you fail. If you're loving to your family, you're successful. If you know God and God knows you, in my opinion, you are most successful. You are most successful. But success creates success. If you have a successful spirit, that's a nature. I was, I was successful in the days that I was really not doing well. But in my heart, the reason why I couldn't give up is because I know that I know that I know I'm already successful. And that success created success. In fact, I noticed the moment I was greedy for success, success ran away from me. It ran a thousand miles because it realized this is fear chasing me. This isn't really a magnetizing force like draws like. You know, and when you're already successful on the inside, it draws that success. But it, it, again, it's like the guy who, who had a genie, and the genie said, you can have anything, not just three wishes. He said, I want lots of money. So the genie dropped lots of money, and the guy died. Because he was crushed by the money. If you don't define success, you'll never know when it happens. If you don't define success, you'll never know what it, when it happens, and you'll always be greedy, and greed always creates poverty. Greed always creates poverty because it's fear-motivated. Anything that's fear-motivated is destructive. Why now, a days, people run to NASDAQ and leave uh, volatilities? Um, do people really run to NASDAQ? Right now, if you look at the stock market, it's pretty short, unless they're short-selling the NASDAQ. I don't, know, I don't know that people are running to it. I think, though, that there's something to be prepared for it, when people start going back to work. And I would suggest looking at, for example, when the disaster hit, people should have been looking at Am uh, Amazon stocks because we're all going to be at home. People should have been looking at eBay stocks or Netflix stocks, Prime stocks, different things like that should have been the things that we should have been looking at to invest in. Now we're looking at a recovery. What should we be looking at? Because I'll tell you what, the face of business is about to change. We should be looking at digital currencies. We should be looking at tech companies. We should be looking at aerospace technology. We should be looking at various things of this nature. Now uh, things are, uh, we're returning. There are a lot of giants that have fallen and are going to continue to fall. And I, I'm telling you as clear as day, there's going to be a lot of riots coming up. Because a lot of people are about to lose their jobs and their positions. But in the midst of it, you've got to have your eyes on the, pl on the things that are going to bring value and change. And I'll tell you, these are going to be your silver, your gold. This is going to be silicon because it's a, it's a huge thing uh, in, in our days as we move it more into the tech revolution. As we move further into the world of automation, you definitely want to look at your automated cars and, and smart mirrors and things like that, technology that you can invest in. I don't know too much, though, about the NASDAQ. I think that's an old boy game. Um, all right, guys, I think that's all the time. How will crypto impact the Forex market as we move towards digitization? Oh, that's a good question. Well, it depends. We don't fully know. Will there be a base currency in crypto and all the currencies, instead of being pegged to the US dollar, will they all be pegged to a cryptocurrency? All I can say is there's great benefits to crypto. And, there was, and if many countries endorse cryptos and they have their own version of crypto, then there'll still be currency wars. And if there's currency wars, there's still need for trading. And there's still money to be made in the industry. And if not, the stock market's there and various other industries and ways, which is why WMG is diversifying into different asset classes, because we can't assume that something will be here forever. But take advantage while it is. How do I become a part of WMG? Good question. My, just app. Just uh, go on WMG TV on Instagram and write to us.
live shows on WMG TV, and uh, I'll get somebody to do a presentation with you. Okay, guys, thank you for your time. Sorry about the shab shab beginnings. Uh, we will continue this again next week, Thursday. I hope you enjoyed trader psychology. A lot of people don't really touch on this topic, but I hope you really enjoyed it. Um, I, um, is JC ready for me? Uh, thumbs up if you are. Guys, thank you again for, for being with us. Thank you again for being uh, for allowing us to come into your home. Oh, someone's asking, how do I become a part of WMG? Please follow WMG TV on Instagram. If you got Instagram, follow WMG TV. If you don't, just email admin at wealthmentorgold.com. That's admin at wealthmentorgold.com. But preferably, please follow at WMG TV on Instagram and just direct message. We're kind of modern kids, so... We like just Instagramming real quick. Email is kind of old school. So just send us a message on there and we'll be in touch with you as well. And if you've got any questions, myself or somebody who's got access to WMG TV chat will speak to you. But remember, life without risk is filled with regrets and everything in your life is subject to how.